Hi, this is Ted Kelly with another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Hey, today we've got an awesome guest on. His name is Ed Kalation. He's with MJC Hospitality. He's going to come on and talk a little bit about all the great things that are going on over there and how he's going to enlighten us on how they're going to be the next big thing in the hospitality industry. Hey, Ed, how are you today? Good. Thanks for having me. Say, so tell us a little bit about you and your journey. How did you get in the hospitality industry? Was it always hospitality or were there a few different turns in between that kind of made you end up here? Well, there really hasn't been many turns. Uh, I was really kind of going into my senior year of high school, really didn't have a clue what I wanted to do. Um, one of our family friends was a guidance counselor. She sat me in the office and said, hey, you got you to pick a career. You got to do something. Your parents are, you know, they're going to pay for college. You got to do something. Um, so I, we kind of sat there and went through all these different careers and she hit on hospitality and she, you know, my response was, I like staying in hotels, you know, let's give it a whirl. So, uh, decided based on me liking to stay in hotels and travel. And that's how I got into the industry. Um, my mom and stepdad have been in the industry for years as well. So they kind of helped me decide a little bit, but it was really her and just not knowing what I wanted to do. Um, and then really family business has been in, uh, we did fairs and festivals and concessions. So that's kind of what I was leaning towards originally. I wanted to take over the family business, but didn't really feel like it was a career. So right, ended in right. hospitality. <laughs> awesome. So, so tell us a little bit about MJC. I know you guys are kind of on the up and coming path. How long have you guys been going? I think you've got maybe almost 10 properties now. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so MJC was started a number of years ago by our owner, O.J. Shaw. Uh, he bought his first hotel, uh, ran that as a general manager for a number of years, and then decided to sell it, um, sold it to an individual. Uh, we still manage that property today for a third party for the owner that he sold it to. Um, right now, we've got seven hotels. Uh, we've, we've bought and sold a couple, just added three hotels uh, at the end of April, three in one week. So we did three transitions pretty quick, wow. um, made it through, um, but... So we're really growing, you know, we're looking, we don't have a magic number set, you know, if it's eight, if it's 10, if it's 15, we're just really, it's about buying the right asset at the right price and, you know, really trying to find great locations within the Southeast. So right now we own six and we third party one, um, which is our seventh. And that's kind of where our area of focus is, you know, we'll add a couple um, on our platform that our owner owns, but looking to add a few on the, the third party side as well for our growth model. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about how things have fared with MJC over the last two years. I know we're coming out of a, a pandemic. Were you guys hurt at all in that early stages of COVID or how did you guys fare through that? You know, I think the industry in general struggled. You know, we we did the same thing that everybody did. You know, we cut labor, we reduced, you know, staff, you know, GMs were working longer hours. You know, um, we, we tried to keep the doors open, reducing, you know, things like, you know, TV service, maybe taking HBO out and saving three, four hundred dollars a month per hotel. And if you do that over six, seven hotels, it adds up. Um, so we really cut back, you know. Um, but I also think, too, what happened was when last year, probably mid year, you know, June, as the brands kind of start to evolve again and say, OK, we need to start to get back to some normalcy. You know, we, we went back to full breakfast in all the hotels. We got away from the grab and go bag. Because we knew the customer, even though they might be paying the same price they paid back in 2019, 2018, the expectation is they want their rooms cleaned every day. They want breakfast. COVID didn't mean anything. Like we're still paying $130, $140 a night. We want a full breakfast. We don't want a brown bag anymore. <laughs> so we really, we did that in all our hotels. We made a quick transition and uh, got back to full breakfast. Um, our hotels, we were lucky enough, really, I think starting April and May of last year, started to get back on track very quickly. Um, last year were actually some of our better years last year in some of our hotels compared to, wow. you know, 19. And we always go back to 19 because that's like the, the closest year because 20 and 21 were kind of just like a blimp on the map, right. so to speak. Right, right. Um, but why, you know, we always think back with MJC and we say, why do we always go back to 19? Why don't we go back to 18 or 17? So we start to look further back, not just back to 19, because yeah, 19 was good, but 17 could have been better. So we're really, that's kind of how we made our decision. So we're back in full swing, you know, today and numbers are great and we're performing very well. Wow. So what are your challenges that you're facing today? Things are picking up, obviously. <laughs> I, I assume you're fighting the same battle that some of these other folks are fighting with trying to find good help. Is that true? That is 100%. We fight the battle every day. You know, we hire people. 
Um, they last a day, they last two days, you know, you almost become, why did, why train anymore? Because you get them in there and they're gone. Um, so we've kind of taken a different approach. We've looked at it and said, all right, you know, we use staffing agencies, they're pricey. Um, we haven't really been successful with that. So we've started to look for more international. So we use J1 workers from one of our hotels uses a bunch of uh, Jamaican students from Jamaica and they work in six month increments and is successful. You know, it, it helps that hotel from a housekeeping standpoint. We've used them at the front desk. We've used them at breakfast. Um, so we've really looked at other agencies besides your normal um, temp service, you know, people that can, you know, come in for six months and help us, you know, over that six month period. We've also looked at allowing them to stay in the hotel, a hotel that's got a hundred rooms and we can put one room out of order and they pay rent to us. It's still revenue, not normally what we would normally make, but it still right. has revenue coming in to pay for that room. And it solves our second issue is staffing. So it fills the room and it solves staffing. So we've done that in a few hotels and it's really honestly been successful. Um, but, you know, they're like any other employee, you know, if they're not performing, yeah. we call the agency and say, hey, we might need somebody else. Here are our challenges. Right. Um, so it, I feel like it's been successful. Is it perfect? No, um, it's got its challenges, but uh, it, it serves the purpose because at the end of the day, We've got to get the rooms cleaned. We've got to service the guests. You only can tell an owner so much. I can't get rooms cleaned today. You know, they're only going to accept that for so long. <laughs> so we need a solution. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that sounds perfect. And we're talking about <laughs> solutions. And then there's so many things that you can't control. Correct. And I know we were chatting. I think you talked about GMs and trying to focus on things you can control versus things you can't. Talk a little bit about that. You're you're enlightening us on that. Yeah, it's important because you know a lot of times you know I've sat in that GMC a number of times two years ago, and you know we talk about well this is going wrong, that's going wrong. Well, if you can't control it, why focus on it? You know, a hotel that needs a renovation to keep talking about the renovation that's needed isn't going to. I mean, we're not going to solve our problem today. So let's focus on the things we can. It's taking care of our guests, taking care of our employees. You know, giving me a clean room and giving them maintained rooms. If you can do those four things you're doing what you can as a general manager. Um, at the end of the day, you can't, if costs are going up, there's nothing you can do. The case of shampoo costs $50 versus it was 35 before. There's nothing you can do. You still gotta buy the shampoo. You know, complaining about the increase isn't gonna do any good. We're, we're all complaining. You know, we complain about the gas right. prices where we were spending $35, now it's 70 to fill a tank. <laughs> so it really becomes, you know, I, I tell them like, all my GMs, control the things you can control, control labor, control expenses, control staff morale, control the guest happiness, cleanliness, and upkeep of the room. That's what you can control. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, you need a renovation. It doesn't matter that the supplies are on back order. What are you going to do? You can call your vendor and say, hey, where are the supplies? Come up with an alternative. But complaining that you can't get the, the brand soap isn't going to do any good. It's not going to change it. I can't magically, you know, get the soap there. So focus on the, the important things. And that's what we, we really focus with uh, MJC is telling them like, you know, those are the things you control. Don't worry about the stuff yeah. you can't because you're not going to be able yeah. to do anything about it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I know even in the uh, renovation world, which is where we play, uh, you know, there was a log jam trying to get oh. stuff off the boat a while ago. And uh, I personally, I don't think it's cleaning up that fast, but uh <laughs> But yeah, I mean, as much as we love folks to say, hey, we want to do a renovation, we need your help with a pit, you know, the stuff is just moving slow and, you know, the freight cost has gone, you know, off oh, the charts and it's like crazy, you know, we, we don't know if we want to pay as much in freight costs as we would pay in FF&E to get the stuff done. So we, we think <laughs> we're going to hold up, which I'm like, kind of hard to argue with that. Um, yeah, I mean, what do you do? Yeah, so, so talk a little bit about the third party management uh, service that you guys offer and why should folks consider uh, a third party management firm for their hotel? Yeah, I, I think it's important because at the end of the day, you know, we're the experts, you know, we do this, we manage our hotels, you know, um, like I said, we've got one that we third party manage. We manage that hotel just like if it was our own, just like if our owner was taking the ROI right. check to the bank. Um, we don't treat it any differently. Um, the goal is to make it successful. We make decisions you know, based on that hotel, just like we would in any of our other hotels. So I think it's important for owners that, you know, don't know the business, just getting into the business, um, want to just be able to kind of be on the sideline, let the experts take care of it, let them run it um, and let them kind of, you know, make it, make the impact for them um, by controlling their, their investment. Um, I think it's important that, you know, the industry has changed so much. It's burned a lot of people out 
owners don't want to necessarily sell, but they don't necessarily want to manage and deal with the day-to-day operations. So I thought is, you know, hand it over to the experts for a small fee and, you know, we will run it. We'll keep you in the loop. We'll obviously take care of the asset just like we would, like if it was our own. And I think that's important is letting them know that we are there to help them and help their their hotel grow. Uh, And I feel like we've done a very solid job with our our hotels, the one that we've uh, third party manage and owners happy and you know, that's what's important. So I think it, that's what's critical is if you don't want or have the time or don't understand the business, hand it off to the expert. And our philosophy is go with a small company. We're a small company because we're still, you know, the owner's family owned, family focused. Um, it's him and his wife. You know, you get to these big companies, you're a number sometimes we feel. We don't want you to be a number. We want to be able to have you on speed dial. You can text, call, email, you know, 24 hours a day. We're here to support your hotel. That's why we're in it. We're in it together. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I saw your your um, tagline: "Small company feel, but big company uh, results," or something of that. Something exactly. of that flavor. I thought that was that was a, a pretty nice way to put that. Um, it is. Let me ask you this: Do you think now that things seem to be turning the corner in terms of the hospitality world, kind of getting back into some kind of routine? Do you think they're going to be a lot more smaller individual owners looking to possibly buy hotels and look for third-party management services or what are your thoughts here? Uh, you know, I think a lot of hotels are on the market and they're going very quick and they're, they're being sold at premium dollars. And we've experienced the same thing as well as we've bought and as we've sold. Um, I think owners that, you know, have investment dollars, they are looking to get in. They might be just getting into the business, um, might be their first hotel, um, might not have been involved in the hospitality industry. I think those are the folks that might look to third party to kind of help. It might just be a one-year contract um, just to kind of help them get started. And right. our thought is, yes, you can give us a one-year contract. We're going to help educate you as well throughout that process. Yeah, we want a long-term partnership, but the idea is we can help you for a year, have a contract, but then you're going to know somebody who knows somebody that we can do the same thing for. So that's really our, our focus and kind of our MO. Yes, we'd want the long-term deal, but you know, at the end of the day, our goal is to, you know, make money just like anybody else, but also be able to know that it's not about today. It's about the future as well. And I like it. So (laughs) tell the folks that's looking for, you know, third-party management companies, how they can find you and MJC so that you guys can help them out. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, mjchospitality.com. There's an inquiry sheet there uh, that goes to me. Um, also, you can reach me uh, via email at edward at mjchospitality.com or uh, via cell at uh, 414-704-7031. So multiple avenues to reach us. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Ed, thanks again so much for giving us a few minutes of your time and sharing with us all the good things that MJC is doing over there. And we look forward to, to hearing great things about you guys in the future. Well, I appreciate the time that you have and uh, given me today. Thanks. All right. Hey, this has been another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Thank you guys so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.